Hello, this is Tony and I want to thank you for stopping by and watching this video, Questions to Ask Your Roofing Company in Florida. Now in this video, you're going to discover things that your roofing company in Florida must do to maintain your roofing warranty. Now there are many things that you'll want to ask a roofing company before they begin work on your home. Of course, there are the obvious questions like how long have you been in business? You would of course want to ask for references, licensing, and insurance. Do they belong to the National Roofing Contractors Association or NRCA? Now all of these are great questions that you'll want to ask and probably a few more. We're not going to talk about these though because they're obvious and most people do know they ask them. What we're going to discuss now is the first question that's not so obvious that you should ask and that's do I have enough ventilation? If you'll notice the picture on the left hand side, you're going to want to first check your attic for rusted nails through the deck. You'll notice the arrows above, these are spots where moisture has gotten in through the nail holes. In the photo on the right, you'll notice that there's been a major leaking running down the rafters. Uh, what you're going to want to do is check nails for rust that are in areas not leaking. Now, what do rusted nails in areas not leaking have to do with anything? When you find rusted nails coming through the decking and there are no leaks present, that is an indication of a lack of ventilation, meaning that you have had condensation build up with the change of seasons, running your heat and air, etc. Now once your insulation has gotten wet from any source, the R factor is gone. Below is a picture of blown in insulation that sustained some water damage. Now there are two types of ventilation, there's passive and there's aggressive. If you'll notice on the left hand side, we've got your passive systems. The first picture is a CRV or continuous aluminum ridge vent. This creates the most airflow, believe it or not, but a lot of people don't like the way it looks. So they go with the most popular one, which is down on the bottom there, the high profile ridge vent. It's the most popular. GAF, as a matter of fact, recommends it. And um, it's very aesthetically appealing. Then on the right hand side, you'll notice we have your aggressive systems. We've got your mushroom style power vent. That's the most popular. All right, we even have some green solutions, a power vent with a solar powered system attached. Now, the thing to remember about ventilation systems is you can have a passive system or an aggressive system, but not both. If you were to use a power vent, say, and ridge vent at the same time, thinking, well, that way I'll get more circulation, um, that's not true. What will happen is your power vent draws from the source of least resistance. So it's going to draw from the ridge vent rather than your eave vents like it should. And then you're just going to have a little circulation in the top and you have all that wasted space. So you basically waste your money. Also, passive systems are recommended by most companies. I recommend them myself simply because you're going to have trouble with power vents. Eventually, it adds to your power bill. Uh, your passive systems work just as well. Soffit ventilation is an absolute must. Now you, on the left hand side, you'll notice you can install a smaller ridge vent or soffit vent according to FHA standards at about eight feet apart. And soffit vent, if you'll notice the picture at the bottom, it's important because you need airflow for proper ventilation. Now they also make a drip edge. Now that's the metal that goes around the edge of the rakes and eaves. And they have a drip edge that has a built in ventilation in the event that you have no overhang for soffit. Now there's also ventilation for bolted ceilings where there's no attic and it slides up between the decking and the ceiling and they're called baffles. Over the years through much scientific study manufacturers have discovered that shingles will burn from the bottom up with improper ventilation. Now this will shorten the life of your shingles significantly. Basically your warranty will be voided and it says so right on the shingle package. Now there's another warranty destroying issue, improper nailing pattern. Now there's what's called a nail line in every shingle and the shingles must be nailed in that nail line. Now you're not supposed to nail in the tar strip, although a lot of roofers do it. Nailing too high in the shingle, which again is what many roofers do, will void your shingle warranty also. The idea is if you nail in that nail line, it's supposed to go through two shingles. The one you're nailing through and the one below that. That way every shingle has, if it's a four nailing pattern, then you're going to have eight nails per shingle. That's what you want to have.